So, Namaskar everybody and thank you for joining into the satsang today. So, we will start with our prarthana. By the Guru's grace and by the will of Sri Krishna, we have all assembled for this Gita satsang. May we have their guidance to be able to learn and adopt the things which will help us to grow spiritually. Let us chant the shlokas. Vasudeva Sutam Devam Kamsa Chanura Mardanam Devaki Paramanandam Krishnam Vande Jagat Kurum Krishna Yavasu Devaya Haraye Paramatmane Pranata Klesha Nashaya Govindaya Namo Namaha Namo Stute Vyasa Vishala Buddha Pullara Vindaya Tapatraneta Yena Tvaya Bharata Taila Purnaha Prajvalito Gnana Maya Pradipaha. So we will move on now to the shloka. Shobha Aure, will you recite? Uh, namaste, ma'am. Uh, namaste. Aparyaptam tadasmakam balam bishma birakshitam paryaptam twidam resham balam bima birakshitam. Thank you so much. Thank you. So we will move on now to the explanation. Ramanujadaya patram jnana vairagya bhushanam. Srimad Venkata Natharyam Vande Vedanta Deshikam Yonitya Machuta Padambuja Yukma Rukma Ram Vyamo Atastaditarani Trinayamene Asmad Guru Bhagavatosya Dayaika Sindho Rama Anujasya Charana Usharanam Prapadye So with prayers to the Acharyas, we will begin with our understanding of the 10th shloka of the first chapter. So we saw in the past two satsangs that uh, Duryodhana was describing the army of first the Pandavas and then their own army he described and all this conversation was telling all this to Dronacharya. So in this shloka, he says, he's talking about a comparison. He's comparing the strength of the two sides. So he says, Aparyaptam tadasmakam balam bhishma bhi rakshitam. So our side, asmakam, our bala, our strength is aparyaptam. That means it is not measurable. It is immeasurable. It is unlimited. It is very large. That is one contextual meaning, one meaning of the word aparyaptam. So protected by Bhishma perfectly, this our army, our army strength is very large. Whereas their side, the other side strength is paryaptam. It is limited and it is protected by Bhima. So he makes this kind of a statement where he is comparing the strength of the two armies and also mentioning whom they are protected by. So if you look at it uh, outwardly at a very superficial level, it seems as though Duryodhana has a lot of confidence about his side and he is putting down the other side and saying that they are not you know, actually worthy of any, uh, we should not worry about them because their strength is very less. It is not sufficient, we say. But there is actually another meaning for the word paryaptan, paryaptam and aparyaptam. So one is, as we saw now, the worldly meaning, one meaning is that paryaptam means limited, aparyaptam is unlimited. So our strength is unlimited and their strength is limited. But there are certain features in this statement that he makes because of which we have to look to find another meaning for these words. So the word paryaptam also means adequate or sufficient or enough. right? And aparyaptam therefore it means inadequate or insufficient or not enough. So if actually Duryodhana was speaking from confidence and saying that our side is greater than theirs in strength, then the question is, why did he compare Bhishma and Bhima? If you think that, okay, he has taken Bhishma's name because 
he is the oldest person on their side then the eldest person on the side of the pandavas he should have said yudhishthira why did he take bhima's name second thing if he thinks that okay bhishma is a great uh, archer a very highly skilled archer and because of that he is taking bhishma's name then the other person on that side who is you know equal to bhishma in archery is arjuna then he should have said arjuna's protected side and if he was talking about the fact that bhishma is their commander in chief then the commander in chief of the pandava side whom he should compare with is drishtadyumna but duryodhana does not take the name of yudhishthira or arjuna or drishtadyumna so he is not comparing on that level then what is his comparison what has actually happened to duryodhana is he is thinking his mind is filled with a kind of doubt and a kind of fear because he knows that these two people bhishma on his own side and bhima on the pandava side both of them have taken particular vows they have promised something what are those promises now bhishma he is invincible nobody can defeat him he is so great a boon he has that he can choose the time of his own death so actually nobody can defeat him and he can defeat everybody else but he has taken a vow that he will not kill any of the pandavas he has said i will kill anybody else but these five pandavas i am not going to touch them he has taken that vow and on the enemy side bhima who is standing has also taken an equally ghor vow what has he taken the vow he has said whether i spare anybody else or i kill them i am not bothered about that but these 100 kauravas who have insulted draupadi in such a bad way i will definitely not spare them so now duryodhana's mind is focusing on these two aspects on his own side bhishma has vowed that he will not kill any of the pandavas and on the other side bhima has vowed that he is not going to spare any of the kauravas so when he is stuck in this position he has a lot of fear we know that both duryodhana and uh, bhima they were very good in mace fighting gada yuddha right they had both learned that art of fighting with the gada from balarama who is the brother of krishna so they were both equally valorous they were both equally capable but duryodhana had a great fear of bhima because as we already said in the previous shlokas that fear came from his conscience telling him that yes i have done wrong so that is the reason why although he knows that he is having 11 akshavani sena and the other side is having only 7 and yet he says paryaptam and aparyaptam superficially it means our side is unlimited their side is limited but actually from the fact that he is comparing bhishma and bhima he is using those words actually in the other way that he says their army is paryaptam sufficient for what it is sufficient to destroy us and our side is aparyaptam it is not sufficient for what to kill the pandavas so in his heart of hearts he understands that it is his side that is going to get defeated now duryodhana is narrating all this to dronacharya now why is he telling all this to dronacharya dronacharya is after all an outsider who has come and joined their side you know because he is their acharya the actual person in their family to whom duryodhana should have you know uh, gone for support or for advice is bhishma but what is his intention in narrating all this to drona he is talking to dronacharya but he is talking quite loudly so that his voice carries and that whatever he is talking reaches bhishma's ears what is his you know secret um, desire he wants that bhishma should listen to this words of duryodhana and he wants that you know bhishma should change his mind and go ahead and kill the pandavas and fight with all his strength and make sure that pandavas are defeated then why is he not telling drona direct why is he not telling bhishma directly because he is scared he is after all the pitamaha and for many times he has tried to correct duryodhana but duryodhana has not listened to his words so now he is scared he wants that bhishma should help him but he is too afraid to approach bhima uh, to approach bhishma directly so that is the reason why he is telling all this to drona 
now we as we already said bhishma was invincible he had the boon that he could choose the time of his own death and yet in the next shloka again duryodhana is telling all the people that you please protect bhishma so we will see that next shloka also today but before that from today's thing that this concept of paryaptam man and aparyaptam and what is the thing that duryodhana is worried about what message can be learned from that firstly we can understand that just having the best resources will never give us confidence if our conscience is guilty if we know that we have done something wrong or if we know that we are not doing the right thing then that conscience will keep pricking us from within and therefore we will never have the confidence that we have even if we have everything in our favor to tell us that we can win so we see in this uh, yuddha that the kaurava side had greater army they had so many greater warriors on their side and yet they could not win why and why duryodhana was not confident because although he knows that he has a big army he knows that he is on the wrong side and such a person who is morally wrong can be destroyed even if he is a very strong person so it is very important that we always know that we are on the right path that we should do the right thing it may be difficult it will be very uh, you know not so easy to uh, always stick to the right thing but if we know and we can understand what is right then we must continue to do that only and not go on to the right or wrong path now we come to the next shloka the 11th shloka in this first chapter where it says ayane shuchya sarveshu yata bhagam avasthitah bhishma meva bhirakshantu bhavanta sarva eva hi so what he is saying is now duryodhana has finished telling whatever he wanted to tell to dronacharya so now he is talking to all his senapatis to all his uh, you know generals in the army and what is he telling them now i am calling upon you to please support our bhishma pitamaha you stay in your places and as you stay in your particular place which has been designated to you you please make sure that you are supporting bhishma now why is duryodhana so worried about bhishma because he understands that bhishma is like the lifeline he is first of all he is pitamaha so everybody respects him he is the commander in chief of the army so again everybody is going to follow his guidelines so he is obviously the most important person now he knows duryodhana knows that he is invincible he has a boon that he can choose a time of his death but then he has said he is not going to lift his arrows against the pandavas so at that point of time duryodhana is very particular that bhishma should be carefully protected now there is a story which is told often to try and convey that what how do we decide what is most important isn't it so once at one time it is said that there was a competition like or there was a conflict between all the different organs in the human body everybody is all those organs started saying that i am important the eye said i am important the um, nose said i am important so like this every part of the body started saying that i am the most important so at that point they decided that they wanted a judge so when they went to the devatas and asked them that which part is most important they said that we will uh, do a test that let each part go away from the body and by that part of the body going away if that life is going to get lost then that part is obviously the most important so the eye went away from the body nothing happened the person continued to live the body continued to live the nose went away nothing happened it continued to live so like that when they compared and saw it was the prana vayu which was the most important because when the prana vayu departs from the body then at that time the life is lost so here bhishma is the prana vayu for the whole kaurava side and that is why duryodhana wants everybody to protect bhishma because if something happens to bhishma then it will be like a defeat for the kaurava side now we must remember that duryodhana he wants bhishma to be protected and he wants bhishma to protect all of them now at this time when they are in danger but 
he never listened to the advice of bhishma when it was given to him much before that when whenever bhishma advised duryodhana that this is wrong you should not do this he never listened to his advice then he is telling that now everybody should remain in their particular places and you should protect bhishma why he is telling all this so that the enemy will not be able to find any weak spot from where they can attack so he wants everybody stay in whatever place is given to you and make sure that bhishma is protected so from these points in the shloka again there are certain lessons for us to learn firstly the behavior of duryodhana towards bhishma similarly in our life many times we want our elders to take care of us we want them to protect us but when they give us well meaning advice i'm not talking about something which somebody simply says but when they give us advice which is supposed to be good for us which is going to take us on to the right track then we don't listen to them if we don't listen to them then the only outcome that will happen is our downfall there is no good that will come out of disobeying our elders so we must learn to give value to all those who are superior to us so when we say superior to us in what way superior to us it is said that we must give respect to anybody who is gnana vriddha tapo vriddha vayo vriddha so vriddha means superior or, or more elder right so who is considered superior to us somebody who has more gnana more knowledge than me to that person i should always give respect somebody who is tapo vriddha somebody who has done lot of uh, sadhana somebody who has had a lot of experience in their life hmm? somebody who has gone through a lot of struggles in the worldly way struggles and experience but in the spiritual way then whatever if they have done more sadhana than us to such a person we should give respect and if not these two then just on the simple fact that somebody is older in age vayo vriddha their age is more than us then to all these categories of people we must always give respect and we must listen to the advice that they are giving to us then our life will get guided on the right track then from the fact that uh, duryodhana is telling everybody stay in your particular places hmm? so what is that signify for us that all of us have one particular role in life so we must understand what is that role and we must try to fulfill it in the best way possible everybody in whatever position they may be they have to play a role now to explain this they give examples the acharyas give example of <coughs> say a game like football so there are some players who are supposed to be in the front position they will play from the front there are others who are behind who will defend right so if the players from behind think that oh i also want to go front and he runs ahead then he is not going to be able to defend his position right which can be disastrous suppose you say there is a procession of a deity of the temple there is a uh, you know utsava going on and the temple is being uh, the deity is being carried around all around the temple now there are people when you hold uh, the they the lord on the pallaki on that palanquin like thing then there are people two people in front there are two people behind now generally what happens is people take photographs everybody takes videos everything is done for, from the front so if the people in front say that okay we are getting lot of importance and people behind say that oh they are only getting lot of importance nobody notices us so we will not carry the pallaki then how will that procession go on similarly in our life we have certain roles where we may get highlighted sometimes we will have roles where we are not given lot of importance we have to remain in the background then we must not fight for the other position whatever is our role we have to keep doing that in the best way possible then the talk about protecting bhishma so that the enemy cannot attack so how do we understand that all of us we also have our weak spots the pancha gnanendriya that we have the five sense organs that we have they are our weak spots so if we let any one of these to get out of our control then that will be the cause of our downfall if you have a water tank no matter how much water how big that water tank is how much ever water you fill and keep if there is one tiny hole from where the water is getting drained out then very soon you will find that all that water in the tank has been lost similarly we may be very good in every aspect but if we have weaknesses if we are not controlling even one of our indriyas 
then that will be the cause of our downfall. So we know the examples of sages like Vishwamitra Rishi, right? He was doing so much of tapas. He was such a great Rishi. And yet, when the senses were not controlled, he soon lost all that tapobala. So if that can happen to somebody like Vishwamitra Rishi, what will be the state of ordinary people like us? We must always remain alert to this factor. And therefore, we must control our Nyanindyas. Control what the eyes are seeing. Not look at things which are going to drag us away from the right path. Not listen to things which will take us on the wrong path. Do everything possible so that our Nyanendriyas are exposed to Sattvic experiences and not to Rajasic and Tamasic experiences. So how can we do that? Now, it is very difficult. I can't control my eyes, control my ears all the time. But what I can do is I can change the objects to which these senses are attached. So right now, if they are attached to worldly things, I can channelize all that attachment towards Krishna, towards the Lord. So in the Mukundamala Stotra, Kula Shekhar Alvar has given the perfect uh, solution. He says, Jivve Kirtaya Keshavam Muraripum Cheto Bhaja Shridharam Panidvanva Samarchaya Chutakathaha Shrotra Dvayam Dvayatvam Shrunu Krishnam Lokaya Lochana Dvayaharer Gachangri Yugmalayam Jigragrana Mukunda Pada Tulasim Murdhanna Madhokshajam. So he's telling his own body parts. No, he's telling all his sense organs. He says, O Tango Jivva, you praise the glories of Keshava. O my mind, you worship the Mura Ripu, the enemy of Mura. Mura was a Asura. So the enemy of Mura who killed him was Krishna. O hands, you serve the Lord of Shri. Shri is Lakshmi. So who is the Lord of Shri? Narayana. So serve the Lord of Shri. O ears, you hear the things which are talked about Lord Achyuta. Achyuta again is Lord Krishna. O eyes, you look at Shri Krishna. O feet, you go to the temple of Lord Hari. O nose, you smell the tulsi which has been offered to the feet of Lord Mukunda. And O head, you bow down to Lord Adhokshaja. So in this shloka, Kulashekar Alvar is giving us a perfect recipe for how to engage our senses in worship of the Lord. How to turn our senses away from Rajasic and Tamasic uh, activities and turn them towards Sattvikata so that we will grow in our spiritual journey. So we can try to do this. If it is not possible for us to do it entirely, at least to some extent, we can try to cut down whatever our indulging of the senses are. So if all the time I'm watching movies, I'm watching TV serials, I'm watching other things, I can reduce that little bit and start devoting some time to watch or to, you know, uh, see something which will invoke in me a desire to worship God. I can watch movies about some saints. I can read something about the life of some bhaktas. That way, I will feel more and more encouraged to be involved in sadhana. If I'm <coughs> listening to um, film music, I'm listening to some uh, filmy songs, I can spend some of the time in listening to bhajans, in listening to some devarnama. Like that, I can engage my ears. Whatever I can serve the Lord in whatever way, by doing puja, by tying up flowers, by offering things to Lord, I can do that. I can keep, especially for the tongue, the tongue is our biggest enemy because of two things. One is the tongue is very fond of tasty food. And when we eat food which our tongue finds tasty, it is highly likely that it is going to be full of Rajasik Tamasik Gunas. So we can control our desire to eat certain types of food. And we can turn it to eating food which has been offered as prasada to the Lord. Only sattvic ahara when we take, then that will pull us further on the spiritual path. That will take us closer to God. And the tongue is dangerous in another way, that it spends all its time and energy in talking unwanted things, in talking ill of others, in criticizing other people, 
in finding faults with other people so i can turn my tongue from involving in such unnecessary and undesirable talk use my tongue to chant the names of lord hari so that way when i control my tongue when i channelize my tongue in the right direction then that is very important for me to get closer to god so by doing all these things we will be able to grow in our spiritual journey so these are the things that we can learn from the two shlokas for today so we took up the first shloka the 11th shloka where he is talking uh, the 10th shloka where he is talking about duryodhana is talking about the strength of the two sides and the way he compares shows that actually he is full of fear because he has a guilty conscience and the 11th shloka which tells us that he is asking everybody to protect uh, grandfather bhishma because he is the most important person to fight for their side and we have seen what messages we can take also from their uh, teachings and lastly we have talked about how to channelize our gnanendriyas into getting closer to god so this is what we had to discuss for today if anybody has any questions or anything to share or comment you are most welcome to unmute and go ahead you can talk Uh, hello ma'am yes tell me in mukunda mala stotram uh, there, there is a description of the five sense organs mm. so here uh, the description is for uh, eyes ears nose tongue and uh, feet you have mentioned yeah so, feet and hands also yeah yeah so so, I... so that is the skin right the skin fifth sense organ yeah so uh, actually for the skin this it is not coming up here particularly in this uh, shloka but there are other uh -huh. places where they talk about it now here why the hands and feet are mentioned is because the hands and feet are part of the karma indriyas they are the um, indriyas of action so even with our hands mm -hmm. many times we do some wrong deeds and our mm -hmm. feet take us to places which are not good for us right so that is why mm -hmm. he is trying to say with uh these are the prominent organs which take us divert us from the path that we want to be on so that is why mm. he has talked about these things so if we talk about the sense of touch then that also is uh, there like we have lot of desires with regard to the sense of touch also like for example mm. we want to wear soft and good clothes we want to have comfortable clothes we want to have dress up well that is one aspect then there is there is the also the pleasure that we want out of bodily contact with other people isn't it with that karma mm -hmm. sukha we want to en, uh, enjoy so that also is part of the sense of touch so that also we have to try and put it that sense also into the uh, service of the lord how can we do that maybe what we can do is we can spend our use our hands and uh, hands also and the sense of touch also in doing uh, alankara for god get pleasure mm. out of doing alankara for lord the touch of the murti of the lord should give us joy rather than mm. touch of something else in this worldly life like that we can take mm. Mm. did that answer your doubt shobha re right? uh, yes ma'am we can give so many examples uh, for this uh, sense organ yeah anybody else has anything to ask and in the previous shloka uh, huh? uh, we have to highlight uh, two words similar words bhima bhi rakshitam and bhishma bhi rakshitam yeah yeah so he is telling about the two people that okay. bhima is hmm. there on their side and bhishma is there on our side hmm. so he is comparing those two now why he is comparing those two we saw isn't it because he is afraid yeah. of the vows that those two people have taken that mm. both of those are going to be dangerous for him if bhishma does not kill the pandavas it is also bad for duryodhana and if bhima kills all the kauravas that is the very definitely dangerous for him like that mm. this shloka is uh, said by arjuna man I'm no, no, no. Here. This this shloka, everything is being talked by Duryodhana only. We are still uh -huh. in the part where Duryodhana only is talking. Arjuna has not yet okay. entered the picture. 
that will happen uh, later. Okay. Yeah. Anyone else? Anything? We have a few moments left. So if there is nothing that anyone else wants to add, we will offer Kritagnata. Let us offer gratitude and Kritagnata at the lotus feet of Sri Krishna and Guru for inspiring us to start and join this satsang. And let us pray for their blessings and grace to always be on us. Namaskar. Thank you very much. We will meet again next uh, Tuesday again. I'm sorry I couldn't take it yesterday. So anyway, next week, Tuesday, we will catch up again. Thank you. Namaste. Thank you, Anseyaji. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Namaste. Thank you, it was wonderful. Thank, Thank you, you Anusya. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Namaskar.